the Daily Gospel Network, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ every day. Join our featured ministry for happiness, healing, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us as we proclaim God's love and help you step into your season. Coming up on the Daily Gospel Network. Welcome church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the One Touch Ministries broadcast. My name is Pastor Shannon Young and, well, my wife isn't with me. She didn't abandon me. <laughs> no, I'm just absolutely kidding. The week of this recording, my wife is actually out um, ministering at a conference. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited. I'm praying for her, for her safe journey um, from um, North Carolina. And I'm just so excited about what God is actually doing for us in this time, in this season, opening up doors, God is making ways. And before I go into my message on today, um, my wife did want to greet you all. So please take this opportunity and welcome prophetess Nadita Young. Oh, bless you, Pastor Shannon. Thank you so much. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I am not in our home. I am in North Carolina. Yes, One Touch Ministries is um, on the rise. Praise God. So God sent me out here to North Carolina to do some ministry. So I just wanted to make sure that I got an opportunity to greet our family and our friends at the Daily Gospel. So we thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you for tuning in. And I know that the word that God has given and Pastor Shannon today. Somebody turn around and say today is going to bless your life and it's going to bring clarity to what God is about to do for you. And thank you so much, honey. Yes, today's word is going to be tremendous. I am so excited. And before we get into the word, um, just by way of a few announcements, um, number one, um, on tomorrow, if you're in the New Jersey, South Jersey area, tomorrow we're doing a spaghetti dinner to benefit um, the residents in Riverside, New Jersey. So if you're in the neighborhood or if you're in the um, New Jersey area or Philadelphia area and you just want a nice hot um, you know, meal, nice hot dinner, Please come over to the First Baptist Church of Riverside. The flyer is right now on the screen and it has the address available. I believe the address is 91 Whitaker Street in Riverside, New Jersey. And so if you need more details, you can email me at Shannon at the number one touchministries.net. And I'll make sure I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Well, listen, also, the end of this month, um, on the 20th of March, I've invited a few friends to be able to come and minister via Zoom for the men's, the, for, the, for the mighty men of valor. I'm getting my uh, <laughs> words all screwed up. The Mighty Men of Valor Virtual Men's Conference. Listen, this thing was so powerful last time we did this and God has instructed us to do this again. And we're inviting you to be able to come and be a part of the Mighty Men of Valor Men's Conference. And this time it's called Game Changers. I have some great friends of mine, Prophet, uh, Kendall Rogers is going to be ministering, Elder Stephen Forte, 
is going to be ministering as well as another Bible college buddy of mine by the name of Pastor Clay Powell. He's going to be ministering and bringing forth the word of God. So I'm just so excited. So if you want to be a part of the audience right there on Zoom with us, make sure you go and register at uh, the number one touch ministries uh, dot net forward slash game changers. And I'll make sure I'll send you the link the night before so that you can log on to Zoom. The reason why I have everyone register is because I change the passwords when we get into our Zoom meetings every single time we do a Zoom because I heard too much stuff that be happening with these Zoom call and Zoom meetings. And so <clears throat> the past few times, a few people said, hey, I tried to get on to the Zoom. I said, no, you cannot get onto the Zoom that way because I changed the password. I do it uh, purposely so that we don't get hacked and so many other things that I heard um, tragedies didn't happen. So, hey, listen, on today, um, because I'm not going to be before you long, is be uh, that I want to just take a few moments and talk about faith. Yeah, faith. The thing that the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1 that faith is, it says, now faith is the substance of the thing. Now faith. Now you have to remember that faith is now. It's not something that you're believing in. It's not something that's going to happen. It's not something that comes over time. You have to have faith right now. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtain a good report through faith, we understand that the world was formed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, that may sound just a little confusing for some people because I'm reading that from the King James Version of the Bible. But let me go into the New um, Living Translation. It says, faith shows the reality of what uh, we hope for. And so it's faith to me is like you can visualize that thing. You can see it. Uh, it's almost like a vision. You can um, see exactly what you're believing God for. You can see exactly, you know, what you're trying to do in life. You can see that you can, that you can graduate and not only graduate, but you can graduate with honors. You can graduate and then you can go forward with the plans that you have in your life. You know, God said, only thing you have to do is ask him and you shall receive it. Now, a lot of times that do applies faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, back to the New Living Translation, it says it shows the reality I believe a lot of times we'd be out of touch with reality. And, and so, you know, so faith allow us to be able to see, almost like seeing into the future. You believing into the future. The Bible says um, uh, to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. And so that word trust. Um, well, uh, that scripture about trusting is talking about faith because we have to have faith in order to believe this thing. We have to have faith to be able to trust in this thing. We have to be, be able to have faith to know that what God said he's going to do for us, he's going to do for us. You believe that God is going to send healing to your body, have faith and know that he's going to do it. And you, you have faith and trust God that um, that you're going to receive the, the new car, the new house, um, you know, be in an established relationship. You have to have faith. So faith shows the reality of what we hope for. We hope for those things. We hope that we get a better job. We hope that the pandemic um, is going to come to an end. But we have to uh, have faith. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. We may not can see it physically. And so, you know what? This is the reason why God loves us so much. Is because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. You know why God loves us so much for those of us who actually serve him and worship him? 
is because it really is a faith walk. We have to believe, we have to trust, we have to acknowledge that he is God. We have to believe. Although we never seen Jesus Christ, Yahshua, we never seen him die on the cross. But because of the stories and because of the things that's written in the Bible, and a lot of people can say a lot of things about the Bible, but it is the holy book that, that, that turns the accounts of what happened at that time. It's just like, look at the Bible. It's almost like a history book. And so, you know, it shows the accounts of things that actually happened to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for our benefit. Do you realize that if it had not been for God dying on the cross for us, that we were destined to hell? We were destined to go to hell, but through the Lord Jesus Christ, he made it possible that we don't have to go to hell. You know why God loves us so much for those who truly believe in him, for those who truly worship him, for those who really try to walk up right. You know the reason why he loves us so much is because we serve him. We ser Not only do we serve him, but we serve him with all of our heart. We acknowledge him. And he's a God that you've physically never seen before. Now that's faith. That is faith. You know, we are not robots. Do you know that we can choose to serve God? And we can choose not to serve God. We can choose to believe in him and we can choose not to believe in him. We're, we're, we're not robots. We're not like the angels. The angels don't have, they, they don't have a way of repentance. If they fall, if they become a fallen angel, that is it. Do you realize that? Do you know that we are redeemed by the blood of of Jesus Christ. He is our redeemer. He came he came down as the old uh, Baptist preachers would say, they would say he came down 40 and 2 generations. <laughs> he came down 42 generations. Because there was a gap. There was a gap between our God and man. The reason why God made us was because he wanted to have fellowship with us. He wanted he wanted someone who he could walk with, who he could talk with. That's the reason why if you if you read in, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, it says God came down and met with Adam in the cool of the day. That means he physically was in the presence of an almighty God. That means he physically seen the Lord. And when Adam, when he fell, when he heard God coming to make his evening visit, he hid himself because he knew he had did wrong. And so we're going to get back to the place where we're actually going to be in the presence of God. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Wow. Wow. What an amazing statement. So this is the reason why God, I see now, the reason why God want me to talk about faith is because a lot of people is struggling with their faith. Because you can't see the light at the, at the end of the tunnel. You can't see the light at the end of you know, the hardship that you may be going through in your life right now. You can't see that God is an almighty and powerful deliverer. But let me take you back to what God told Joshua. See, I have given you Jericho. You have to see it to believe it. Sometimes this, it takes more than just, um, uh, uh, um, just writing it down. Yes, you have to write the vision. Yes, you do have to make it plain so that when you read it, you can say, wow, some of you need to be able to have a journal right now and just begin to write things down. 
because you're going to be able to see how God is going to change some things around for you. Going back to my scripture, uh, Hebrews 11 and 1, it said, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we, we cannot see through their faith. And so in, 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 in the Bible uh, at this time, this is what's called the, I guess you could call it the hall of faith, if you will, because it talks about all the different characters in the Bible who went through challenges and came out victorious. They went through opposition, but they came out victorious. It says here, through their faith, the people in days of old earn a good reputation. Wow. They earned a good reputation. What is your reputation that you're seeing right now? What What is it that, that, that in your life right now, that at the end of your life, people are going to say about you? At the end of your life, what are they going to say about you? Uh, that's a whole nother lesson. I can't even get into that right now. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. When God spoke it, do you know that when God said, let there be light, light started traveling, God never said, light stop. So that means from millions and millions and billions of years, light is still traveling. God never said stop. He said, um, the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. That is so powerful. So in other words, so if you have an idea, if you have an invention, if you have something that you, you know, thought of and, you know, um, a line of something, some clothing or something like that. God gave you the vision to do something. It's literally um, taking nothing and making it into something. But as we can see right now in the world that we live in, literally God took nothing and made it into something. See, in our, in our finite minds, we can't imagine. The Bible says in Genesis that the earth was void and without form. In other words, this fear of a world, a planet that we live in, it existed, but not the way that it exists today. It was void. It was without form. That means it was there. Can you, you probably can't even imagine that. It was there, but it wasn't in a fear because I can't say circle. I can't say, you know, oval. It, it's technically a fear. A sphere. I, <laughs> now, y'all have to sometimes excuse my dialect. I'm from the Midwest, so a lot of times I may not say things right. But uh, just imagine, I'm trying to say sphere. You know, the S-P-A-R-E word. You know, that word right there. <laughs> so when God said, let there be light light travel and then when god spoke and said you know uh, allow the um allow the world to be formed it began to shape itself it began to form itself it it it, it you know a lot of people i guess they still believe in the big bang theory i'll say i be i believe in the big bang theory too absolutely god said it and bang it happened <laughs> so it uh so God said it, bang, it happened. And I'm telling you, the everything began to get formed. And so then a lot of people say, Hey, I've never seen God before. How how do I know that God is real? If you go back into Genesis again, he said, Let us make man in our image. Who is our image? Who was he talking to? And remember, God is a three-part being. He's God the Father. 
It's God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. He's the Trinity. It's three in one. I did that backwards. <laughs> three in one. <laughs> he is the Trinity. He is the three in one. So when he said, let us make man in our image. Only thing you have to do now is take a look in the mirror. Because you're made in the image of God. Now I'm talking about faith. That's going to take faith that you can look in the mirror and you can say, wow, I'm made in the image of Yahweh. Yahweh. You know, the, the, the actual meaning, that the, you know, the actual name and the actual meaning of God is Yahweh. Because he's breathtaking. So a lot of people says Yahweh, Yahweh. It is actually Yahweh. Wow. And so this is the reason why I'm talking about faith is for the simple fact is because it really does take faith for you to understand that God made you, that God created you. He created the whole earth. He created everything that is seen because he took something that was unseen and made it so that you can see it, so that we can see it. And so then it says in verse six, I'm skipping down to verse six, it says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone that wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder to those who are sincerely <coughs> seeks him. <coughs> Excuse me. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. In order for me, because I want to please God so much. I have to believe that he is and he is God and that he can do every single thing that he said that he can do. He will do. He may not do it when you want him to do it, but believe my brothers and my sisters that God is going to do it. Only God can do it <laughs> and only God can do it for you. Whatever it is that you're facing, th this is why. We should never give up. We should never throw in the towel. You may be crying at night, but the Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so you have to understand and know that your morning time don't have to be at 6 a.m. Your morning time don't have to be at 8 a.m. Your morning time can happen at midnight because Paul and Silas said late in the midnight hour. <laughs> That's what Fred Hammond said. He said late in the midnight hour. But Paul and Silas, late in the midnight hour, they began to pray and they began to sing praises unto God till the prisoner's guard heard them and the earth began to shake and the prison doors were open. That right there just tells me that if you uh, praise God, if you believe God, if you just go ahead and sing, Seek the presence of God, even in your darkest hour. Even though you may feel like that you're being bound, God says that if you sing praises unto me, if you acknowledge me, if you worship me, that I'm able to break open the chains of bondage. I can break open uh, prison doors and you can be free today in the name of Jesus. So that's why uh, we should never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every single day. Now, I'm reading to you 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. It says, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. I'm here to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, <laughs> that although you may be going through some things in your life, Although you may be going through some hard times right now, the, since last March, you know, you know, realize we're coming up into one year in this pandemic. Since last March, 
Uh, God has taken care of you. You're still here. Some people didn't make it. Some people end up dying off and they went on to glory to be with Jesus and to live with him in his kingdom forever. And I know that you may be suffering. You may be hurting because you lost someone either due to the pandemic or either through to um, some other situation. But I'm here to tell you to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I want to acknowledge to you today that right now, although you may be going through some troubles, the Bible says for our present troubles are small and won't last very young, long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and it will last forever. The Bible says that I am waiting, the earth is waiting and groaning and waiting for true worshipers to be able to break out into the thing that they're called to do, that they'll break out and be able to serve God, be able to break out and be able to do those things that God is calling you to do. The earth is groaning. Let me tell you something. If you live in an area that, that, that typically doesn't have earthquakes and you know that there are some things that God wants you to do, then that means that the earth is groaning. Listen, in Texas and in southern parts of the state, they don't usually have snowstorms and all this other kind of stuff. But as you've seen in the news over the past few weeks about Texas and the snowstorms and everything else, this is the planet saying, I'm waiting for my believers to wake up and have faith to be able to go forth in name of Jesus. So we don't look at the troubles we cannot see. Rather, we fix our gaze, we fix our eyes on things that cannot be seen. For the things that we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Listen, let me encourage you some more on today. Listen, don't you understand that the things that are seen are temporal and they're subject to change. The chair that I'm sitting in is temporal. It's subject to change. I can get a brand new chair. It's subject to change. But my life is eternal. I can't see the spirit of God that's living on the side of me. But that is eternal. When I go, it's going up to heaven where I'm going to be singing and shouting my troubles over Listen, the thing that you're experiencing right now, listen, what you're experiencing right now, first it happens in the heavens and then it happens on earth. So you have to bombard heaven with your prayers so that the things on the earth can change for you in this time. Listen, as we are embarking on one year of this global crisis businesses and schools and travel and shortages of food and supplies as abiding believers now more than ever we have to apply faith we need money to buy food we need money so that we can have roof over our, over our head we need a uh, water to, so that we can bathe and be able to cook and be able to live day by day it's not only the middle class that's suffering, but we're all suffering. I talked to a few people at my jobs who are lawyers and doctors and business owners, and they're saying, I'm going through it. And I want to reach through the phone and tell them that trouble don't last always. God is going to do it. Apply your faith. Apply your faith right now. To be to change your heart and change your situation. Listen, my time is up here. Hopefully, for more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.